guys, welcome back. I'm Josh with the Financial Advisor Car Guy, and today we're gonna to discuss depreciation. Now, when you think about depreciation in general, cars come to mind immediately. Cars are literally one of the worst investments you can make. So when you go to the dealer and they try to talk you into the latest and the greatest, and you buy that car and you drive away, the moment you come off the lot, you've lost 10, 15, 20% of the value. If you were to resell that car the next day, there's no chance you're getting anywhere near what you just paid. Now I'll tell you, results vary person by person, but at the end of the day, if you can turn a profit or not lose any money when you buy a car and drive it and enjoy it and then sell it, you've won. So I would argue that the money that you can make on a vehicle isn't made when you sell it, it's, it's when you buy it. So use your negotiation skills, try to get the very best price you can, but more than anything, you really wanna do your research. So for today's episode, I'm gonna talk about my pickup. It's a 2011 Ford F-150 Raptor. Now, Raptors are more and more common, if you will, every day. I feel like driving to work, I see a couple of them literally every single day. So they're not as rare and unique as they once were. But that said, most of the ones that I see are the newer generation. Ford came out with the Ford Raptor in 2010 and carried the initial model through, I wanna say 14. The second generation of Raptors started in 2017 and ran through 2020. The rumored Gen 3 does come out in 2021 as a 2022 model. And conceptually, they're looking at doing two engines. They're looking at the same V8 that is found in the GT500. And they're also going to do a EcoBoost V6, which is what's in the Generation 2 Raptors as well. Now in 2017, Ford dropped the SVT tagline or, or logo. Um, the SVT stood for Special Vehicle Teams, and that's what Ford's Special Development Team put together for the first gen. And those are the ones we're gonna talk most about. Now they have pretty well hit the bottom of their depreciation curve, and let me tell you what that means. Now the depreciated price of an SVT Raptor varies. It's based on mileage and model year. It also has a lot to do with options and things like that. But generally speaking, the person who buys the Raptor wants that beefier off-road package. They want the wider stance. They want the taller factory lift, all those things. So when you look at retail values as opposed to wholesale values, as opposed to secondary market values, as opposed to trade-in values, they all have a pretty wide discrepancy. But what you'll see is that generally speaking, you can't find a Raptor under 20 to 25,000 unless it has 150,000 or more miles. So it doesn't really matter if it's a 2010 or a 2014 or anywhere in between. The idea is based on mileage and options. So when you look at a 2011, for example, like mine, I shopped pretty hard for it. Now I found the best deal that I could given the mileage and the options that I wanted. And if I were to sell that truck today, I could sell it for what I paid for it. Now I bought the truck almost two years ago and I've put about 11,000 miles on it. So I don't drive it a ton but I keep the mileage low. My commute's only a few minutes each way. So unless I'm putting a bunch of miles on the truck, towing my travel trailer with my family, the daily commute isn't really adding to, to what the count on the odometer is. And so it's able to hold this value pretty well. Now, obviously trucks that are more fully loaded are going to have a better retail value or a resale value for private parties. My truck has heated seats. It's got the tonneau cover. It's got aftermarket wheels and tires. It's going to have a few other aftermarket goodies that I'm gonna put onto it eventually, but conceptually, I can drive this thing day after day after day without it really depreciating a whole bunch more. Not until it hits that magic number of 100,000 miles will it really start to depreciate. So I think it's a good example of a vehicle that you can buy and drive and not lose your tail on it when you go to sell it. You can enjoy it for what it is. It is still somewhat hard to find and F-150s depreciate so rapidly anymore that this is kind of a nice alternative. Now, generally you would think of a supercar, a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or something like a Bugatti or something really high end that might appreciate in value. Now, Ford Raptors are probably never going to appreciate. They'll likely stop depreciating though. It'll get to a point where it doesn't matter how many miles are on the truck or what year the truck is. Someone who has to have a Raptor is gonna have to be willing to pay what they fair market is at that time. And so, you know, thinking on the high end, when you have a, when you have a one-off or, or a very limited number production car, many times it does appreciate in value. And when it appreciates, that's where you can make money while driving the car. So again, I kind of argue that the profit to be made on a vehicle isn't necessarily on the sale, it's on the buy. 
And the longer you can own a car and the more mileage you can put on it without impacting the value, the more you win when it comes to trading that car in or selling that car or moving on to the next. So it is important to be strategic and take your time and do your homework. Research what you want, why you have to have it, learn about the options, learn about what's desirable so that again, when you go to sell it, you don't have to take forever and you don't have to go through tire kickers or you don't have to be resorting to trading the truck or car in. You can find that right buyer because you'll know how to market it and you'll know what it is that you looked for when you bought that vehicle. So for round numbers sake, let's say I paid $30,000 for my truck. Now again, it's a 2011 and I bought it in 2019. So when I bought it, it was already eight years old. Now the truck brand new was something like 45 to $48,000. New Raptors, the generation two ones, are anywhere from 65,000 to 85,000. And those haven't held their value quite the same. Now you can find a used gen two Raptor in the low 40s, but you can still not find too many gen one Raptors under maybe 25,000. So you know, again, I, I found the right truck with the right amount of mileage. I could put another 15 or 20,000 miles on the truck and still sell it for that 25,000 mark if that's our arbitrary number. And basically to drive that truck 30 or 40,000 miles would have only cost me about $5,000. So inexpensive to own, yeah, I'd say so. Uh, when it comes to routine maintenance and repairs, it's a Ford, we're not talking exotic. We're not talking an Italian Ferrari or Lambo or any of those kind of things where you know, taking it into the shop might cost a grand or two or five. So that's something to consider too. Um, the wear and tear on these trucks, unless they're absolutely abused and beat up, you can, you can find, find a pretty, pretty solid, solid deal truck. on these trucks if you know how to look and know where to look. And you have an idea of what the price range is. Now, companies like Auto Tempest, Car Gurus, even Craigslist and eBay, you can find a pretty decent deal. Now, Car Gurus is great because it tells you what it thinks that fair market value is. Now it does take into effect popularity and rarity. So when you look at a truck like a Raptor, you're not gonna necessarily uh, you know, see one Raptor for every dozen F-150s. You're probably gonna see one Raptor for every 60 or 70 F-150s. And you know, going back to the first gen idea, the first gens were produced in much lower numbers. Again, the special vehicles team at Ford put that truck together. The gen two ones were much more common as far as production numbers. And it's not, un not unusual to see one sitting on a, a used car lot or, or a Ford dealer's showroom floor or any of those things. You know, they're not a special order vehicle. You just buy one. So, you know, long term, I definitely think the Gen 2s are going to depreciate to be about the same price as the Gen 1s. And while age, again, might bother somebody, you know, the engine's completely different. So it's a completely different animal. You know, the first Gens were a 6.2 liter V8. Uh, most of them were. I'll throw that caveat out there. Um, but the second version of the truck, the Gen 2s, was the EcoBoost V6 with the turbo. And, you know, again, some people would rather have those turbos and, you know, have that, have that quick boost as opposed to, you know, just V8 raw power and torque. And so it's kind of a pick your poison type of deal, but at the end of the day, it's really kind of nice to have those options. And um, again, the, the Gen 3s that are coming out here in a little while are gonna have kind of both, you know, the best of both. You can have a turbocharged uh, EcoBoost or you can have the big V8, uh, which I wanna say they're gonna supercharge them. So it, it's gonna be an interesting uh, animal, you know, when it comes to, uh, to testing the Gen 1s versus the 2s versus the 3s. But um, for rugged reliability and things, I don't think there's a better truck than the Gen 1s. I might get some hate for that, but um, you know, my biased opinion is, is that that big V8, that 6.2 liter V8 and the Gen 1 trucks are just phenomenal. And, um, you know, it's been pretty bulletproof for me. I've had a few little things here and there need some tinkering and work, but, you know, generically speaking, it, it's been a pretty bulletproof truck. And I'd imagine that most Gen 1 Raptor owners are going to agree with that. So uh, lots of online support for those trucks, you know, forums, you can do just about anything yourself. They're real easy to work on from a, you know, usability uh, daily driving standpoint. And so... Um, depreciation on these trucks really has gotten close to the bottom. Again, I, I don't know that you'll ever be able to find a Raptor in decent shape with, you know, an average amount of miles for, for less than $20,000. And even finding one between 20 and 25 is pretty rare today. When it comes to depreciation, not every vehicle is the same. There are examples out there of cars that never depreciated. One solid example of this is the 2005 and 6 Ford GT40. Now that car came out at the end of 04 as an 05 model, 
it was stickered at 150,000 bucks, give or take with options. Now, the moment that car came out, you couldn't get one. They, they produced such a small number. They were pre-sold, um, generally high-end collectors, celebrities, and those types of folks were able to purchase those cars. So the secondary market for it was quite crazy and people were known to pay 160, 70, 80, 200,000 dollars the first year that they were available. So they never depreciated. And in today's market, they go anywhere from three to 400,000 for a reasonable example, up to half a million dollars for an example that maybe has only a couple thousand miles. In 2017, Ford came out with the Gen 2 uh, GT and it was very, very similar. Now, Ford put some stipulations on that deal and wouldn't allow just anybody to buy it. You couldn't just walk into a Ford dealer and say, I'd like to buy this car. No, you had to actually fill out a questionnaire and be interviewed by Ford to make sure that you were a reasonable fit for ownership. Now, that looks different for everybody, but conceptually, if you follow along, Ford wanted to pick and choose who drove these cars. They wanted a specific set of people driving these cars. So at the end of two years of ownership, you could, you were contractually obligated to not sell the car for two years. So at the end of two years of ownership, we saw several of these cars hit the market and they were selling for seven figures. They were selling for a million, 1.1, 1.2, you know, again, depending on color and options and things like that. And so once again, we didn't see these cars depreciate at all. They never sold below what the suggested retail price should be. Now, a lot of that has to do with the legacy of the GT40. And if you think back to the 60s and those cars winning Le Mans, beating Ferrari, um, yeah, that has a lot to do with the, you know, the attraction to that racing icon. So, you know, if you watch that movie Ford versus Ferrari, you've kind of got an understanding of how Carroll Shelby worked with Ford to develop that car. And his legacy has continued in a lot of different ways, but Ford really tried to captivate, you know, what it once had racing at Le Mans in 2017 with the new Gen 2. Um, that car did go back to Le Mans and it also won. So, you know, once again, that racing heritage, you can have that in your garage if you know the right people or, or are willing to fork out the dough. So, you know, depreciation, again, it's a strange animal and it's not like your run of the mill, you know, daily driving Honda or Toyota or Ford sedan. Um, there definitely are times where it makes sense to kind of pick and choose what your daily driver might be based on depreciation schedules. So once again, to kind of recap, some cars don't depreciate, Others depreciate dramatically. And then there's things like my Ford Raptor that have pretty well bottomed out at the depreciation curve and they'll pretty much just kind of hold their value whether or not I use it or drive it. Um, I'll be in a position to pretty well get what I paid for it when I come time to sell it. So anyway, thanks for following along. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comment below. Please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell. And remember, may every investment you make be a good one. Till next time.